both upstairs. Oh, Rogers. Eleanor! Eleanor! Eleanor, my dear. How is she, the poor thing? I've settled her, thank you, Mrs. Jennings. Oh, la. I hurried all the way there only to find the spasms had gone off again. So like my Charlotte. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, my dear. My dear. I now know the full story. I had it not an hour since from my friend, Mrs. Taylor, who was standing right beside the boat last night. Why did you not send for me? Oh, but Mrs. Oh, Jennings... Oh, never mind. Is... That poor creature. Poor, poor creature. No wonder she's unwell. She has a weak stomach, like my Mary, and anything at all disagreeable upsets it instantly. Oh, that poor... Oh, oh, the wickedness of that man. The wickedness. He has used her abominably, and I shall tell him so to his face when next I see him. Oh, yes, I shall. I shall not scruple whoever is present. Oh, Mrs. Jones, oh, don't upset. Fifth. Fifty thousand, they say her fortune is, this young woman he is to marry. And by all accounts, it won't come before it's needed either, because they say his affairs are all to pieces. All to pieces. Goodness, who's that at the door? Well, there is one comfort. He's not the only young man in the world worth having. And with her pretty face, she will never want admirers. Never. Oh, good goodness. I do believe it is. It's Colonel Brandon. He has heard the news and lost no time in turning the situation to his own advantage. <laughs> he will take her on the rebound, as they say, and she could not do better. Two thousand a year without debt or drawback. Except, of course, for the little love child, and she's a very quiet little thing, I understand. My dear, I must slip away. <laughs> they will be married before the midsummer, you may depend upon it. In you go, sir. Thank you. Colonel Brandon. Uh, Miss Dashwood, I'm sure you would prefer not to discuss the painful events of last night. But I feel there are certain matters which should no longer be withheld from you. However, if you would rather I did not speak, I would say nothing. You mean matters concerning Marianne and Mr. Willoughby? About him, principally. Your sister, thank God, must be utterly blameless. Then tell me what you know. Please. You remember the day I quitted you all so suddenly at Barton when we were to have gone on that expedition and I was recalled to London? Yes, yes, of course. But now I shall have to go right back to the beginning. Miss Dashwood, you may or may not be acquainted with the fact that I have a ward, a young lady who is in my charge. She is, in fact, my niece, although I'm quite sure the world would have her somewhat more closely related. This poor girl is very dear to me. She is the child of a loveless and unhappy union. Both her parents are now dead, so I have a double responsibility as her guardian and only relative. She is a girl of striking character, as her dear mother was at her age. Wanting often in prudence, I'm afraid, but never in liveliness of spirit. It is hardly surprising that your sister should instantly have put me in mind of her. But to return, she went last summer to stay with a schoolfellow in Bath. There I later discovered that two young people were permitted to roam almost at will without proper protection. I should blame myself to the end of my life for not making sufficient inquiries. But how could you? Yes, yes, I should have done. But that is beside the point. The result was that they met in a coffee shop or somewhere, a party of young bloods, of whom Willoughby was the ringleader. Further meetings were arranged of a more intimate nature. Need I make myself more clear? No, you need not. The first I heard of it was when I received that urgent summons the day of the picnic. She had run away to London when her, her condition could no longer be concealed. Poor thing. There she she had attempted to do away with herself. So I was obliged to stay with her, you see, for the remainder of her time. And how she... As she was brought to bed of a boy the week who came to London. Oh, a boy, and is she fully recovered? She is well enough in body, 
but her life is in ruins. She is just 18 years old. Oh, how dreadful. It is indeed a dreadful and sordid story. Perhaps I was wrong to speak to you at no, all. No, no, indeed you are not. It is as well that one should know of these things. So you can imagine my feelings when I saw this girl in the company of your sister, because I was aware from the beginning that he had formed some sort of relationship with my poor niece, though at that point I was ignorant of its exact nature. Really? I can scarcely yet believe it. I can see him as foolish and profligate, but not as a villain. There are some men, Miss Dashwood, whose villainy consists largely of weakness. They are not to be trusted in matters of the heart. Yet the strange thing is that this weakness seems to render them not less attractive to members of the opposite sex, but more so. It is curious and paradoxical, but I have observed it to be the case. Yes, I believe that may well be so. I have ventured to tell you this, Miss Dashwood, so you may see the events of last night in a somewhat different light on your sister's behalf. Whether or not you pass the information on to her, I leave entirely to your own good judgment. I think she should be told. It may cause her added pain for the moment. But in the end, when she comes to herself again, it should help her to see matters in their true light. I agree. That is my feeling exactly. Thank you, Colonel Brandon, for being so frank with me. Well, you know, do you not, that your sister's well-being is, is of great concern to me? I believe I do know it. And I thank you for that even more. There's no need to thank me, Miss Dashwood. I can assure you that... Yeah, oh, yes. Thank you. Ah, Eleanor. Brother John, what brings you here? I learned from your mother that you were both in London. And as Fanny and I are to be here for a while, I thought that we should all meet. Well, that was very civil of you. Colonel Brandon, may I introduce my brother, Mr. John Dashwood? How do you do, sir? Sir, Fanny sends her warmest regards. She would have come herself, only... Getting around London is so monstrous, fatiguing and expensive that she's having to rest this morning. How very wise of her. And Marianne, where is she? Out shopping, I presume? No, Marianne is in her room. In her room still? What at this hour of the morning? She is a little indisposed, that is all. Oh, dear. Nothing infectious, I hope. No, nothing infectious. Now, brother, if you, look, if you will excuse me for one moment, I do beg your pardon. Oh, please. I shall await news of your sister's recovery with some anxiety, Miss Dashwood. I shall give you news of her, of course. In the meantime, I am happy to feel that she could not want for more loving and sympathetic care than she will receive at your hands. <clears throat> Who is that fellow? Colonel Brandon is a friend and neighbour of the Middletons. He's an excellent, good-hearted man. Brandon? Brandon. It's not Colonel Brandon of Delaford, by any chance? I believe that is the name of his estate, yes. Oh, he is a man of some <coughs> substance. Considerable substance. Oh, my dear sister, why did you not make that clear when you introduced him to me? I'm so sorry, brother. Perhaps I should have said, this is Colonel Brandon who owns so many hundred acres and has so much invested at 5%. My dear Eleanor, I wish he had twice as much for your sake. For my sake? Why for my sake? Oh, if you think that Colonel Brandon has any intention of making me his wife, then I assure you, brother, that you are quite wrong. I think you are mistaken, Eleanor. I think you are very much mistaken. I thought I observed a considerable warmth in his manner towards you just now. Oh, you may well blush, miss. You may well blush. I'm not blushing, thank you, brother. It would indeed be droll if Fanny were to have a brother married and I a sister at the same time, would it not? Did you say Mr. Ferrers is to be married? Well, it is not quite arranged yet, so say nothing. But his mother has decided that it would be as well. Is that so? And has she also decided whom he is to marry? She has her ideas on the matter, certainly. Yes, I may safely tell you, sister, since you are always discreet, I know. Uh, but it is her wish that he should be betrothed to no lesser person and the elder, Miss Morton. There, yeah, that surprises you, does it not? I'm afraid I can make no comment, as I do not know the lady. Not know Miss Morton? But anyway, what is Mr. Ferrer's opinion of this arrangement? Edwards, 
Why, what concern is that, sister? Uh, goodness me, I'm almost forgetting the purpose of my visit here. I am to give a little dinner at which Mrs. Ferris has graciously consented to be present. Fanny and I would, of course, be delighted to give you and Marianne the opportunity of being presented to her. Oh, thank you, brother. But now, really there is I... no need to feel nervous, I assure you. Her manner is a trifle austere at first, but I think you need have nothing to fear, especially now that Brandon has come upon the scene. 